Father, uh, we are thankful to be here today and thankful uh, for the ways that you are at work in our church and the ways that you are at work to draw new people to Redeemer. We praise you for that. And as we look out on this uh, new Pastors and Choirs class, and I'm certain there will be others joining us along the way, uh, we rejoice and we praise you for them and thank you for their interest in this church. And I pray, Lord, that as we uh, move through this material over uh, the next several weeks together, that you will bless us and, and that you'll help uh, folks make uh, decisions about uh, membership here at this congregation. And so we pray that you would allow this to be very practical and, and helpful to people. Uh, Lord, um, you are doing something here, and we thank you for it. We thank you for the vision you've given us. We thank you for uh, the things that we believe, and we pray that uh, all these things will be communicated over these next few weeks in a way that is helpful and humble and, um, and encouraging, and that through this all, you will continue to build your church. And so go before us now. Use me, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Uh, come on in, everybody. Get a notebook. Uh, it's good to see you today, and I want to... Huh? Anybody need a notebook? All right, this is um, the first of our pastors and choirs classes, and uh, like uh, any class when you start out, one of the things that, that you want to do at the beginning is kind of introduce the material and so forth and, and um, introduce one another, and I want to introduce myself to you, and then we'll, we'll kind of get to know you just a little bit before I then take you through some of the things we'll be doing today. Um, probably most of you, if you've been here any time, will know that my name is Mike Campbell, and I am the senior pastor here at um, Redeemer Church. Uh, I was also the, the founding or organizing pastor of this church, Redeemer, and I'll tell you more about the story of Redeemer when we get to our vision. But just real quickly, Redeemer was started 10 years ago with uh, a core group of about 100 people out of a previous congregation that was here called Trinity Presbyterian Church. Trinity Presbyterian Church bought another facility and moved the majority of, their, of the congregation there. And that 100 people that had been doing a lot of ministry in this community wanted to stay and start a new church here and, uh, and, and call a, a pastor to be the founding organizing pastor of this church. And so they called me. And so I'm the, the first and have been the only pastor here at Redeemer Church and been here for 10 years. Uh, I am f from Virginia, from Southwest Virginia, from a little town called Bluefield, Virginia. Um, grew up there. That's where my, my parents and siblings still are. They still live there uh, in that area, uh, right on the border of West Virginia, right close to Tennessee. So we're, it's where I grew up. So I grew up in coal mining country in the mountains and so forth, and that was my, my upbringing. Became uh, Presbyterian. I grew up Methodist, um, United Methodist. My grandfather was a Methodist minister. And that's interesting because Methodists and Presbyterians are like on the opposite ends of the spectrum, okay? And, and so if you have questions as we move through talking about our theology and our beliefs and so forth, uh, I, I can imagine that probably most of your questions I've already had them as well, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to answer them graciously and helpfully and, and with some humility because I realize that people believe different things. Uh, I, I became Presbyterian though when, when I was uh, uh, in college. I went to a, a Presbyterian liberal arts school and it, it was there, I was, a, I was a Bible major and philosophy minor and it was there that as I was wrestling through these things, uh, it took a while, it took about two years of really kind of fighting for what I believed, and that I, I became Presbyterian and Reformed, which I'll explain to you guys a little bit more next week, if you don't know what that, what that means. Uh, met my wife there, Karen, and we have uh, been married for 27 years, and we have uh, three kids. Uh, our oldest, uh, Katie, is a junior at Ole Miss. Uh, then we have a, a son, um, Matthew, who is a senior at Jackson Academy. And then we have a daughter who is in the eighth grade, and she is at Christ Covenant Christian School, which is connected to, to Pear Orchard. So we have three, three kids, two girls and, and, a, and a boy. Um, we live here in the neighborhood. In fact, just right across the street is where, where we live. And uh, uh, let me see if there's anything else of real relevance and importance by way of introduction. Uh, I've been a believer in Christ since I was 16 years old, and uh, um, love love uh, the multi-ethnic church and seeing people regardless of their backgrounds and experiences and diversity come together in the body of Christ that's 
it's been sort of my life in ministry. It's always been about those kind of things. Um, I worked in missions for a time, and then I, this is my second church pastoring. And my previous church was a multi-ethnic church as well. So uh, I did serve in Miami before coming here, Miami, Florida. I was down there for 12 years. And while I was there, I served a mission agency called Ministries in Action for five years. And I traveled overseas a lot doing community development projects, working with, with uh, folks. Uh, in poor communities, and mainly in Haiti and Dominican Republic were places where we did a lot of our, our work. And then I took on a church there, church revitalization of a church called Pinelands Presbyterian Church in, in Miami, and I pastored that church for seven years. Came here in 2004. So that's a little bit about me. Um, any, any questions about me before I, I kind of get to know you a little bit? All right. Uh, at some point... I'll bring my wife in here, and I always the first class, which makes sense that it would do what happened then, but every first class, I always forget my wife to bring her in here, but I did introduce her to you. So at some point, I'll remember to have her come in here so you can see who my wife is and so forth. So here's what I want to hear from you. Basically, uh, and don't, don't be shy or anything like that. It's, it's cool. You can just sit there and, and, and say this. I just want to hear um, just who you are, meaning your name. And one of the things that's always helpful to us, and, and by the way, before I do this, let me introduce some other people to you. This is Dina Plunkett. These people will be very important in this class, Dina Plunk, and, and further on after this class. Dina is our church administrator. Um, any information you need, she's typically the person you'll want to go to to get it. She has most of the answers to most of the things that are going on uh, here at Redeemer Church. So she's our church administrator. When you email the office, excuse me, for information, you'll probably end up getting a reply from Dina one way or the other. Gene Dent, who's right there, he's one of our elders. He's the chairman of our shepherding committee. This class, the Pastors Inquirers class, is under our shepherding committee because its purpose is assimilation and to bring people into the life and ministry of the church. So Gene will be here in the class, and if you have any questions, uh, please make sure if you don't see me that you can go to Gene or Dina if they're in the room. Uh, we are recording. This is Jimmy and Donnie in the back. Donnie's running sound. Jimmy's running video. And they are recording this. So I say that to you, and not just because I'm going to probably stand behind here and I usually move a lot, but also if you happen to miss any of the classes, we do encourage you to take the time to go and, and watch. Now you'll be able to watch the classes uh, online. They'll run on our, on our website, and we'll get them up as soon as possible, and then you can watch the classes that you, uh, that you um that you may miss. Everybody, it's good. It's so good to have you, and uh, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for, for just briefly introducing yourself to me. Uh, how many of you, just so, and then this will help me to kind of know the audience that I'm addressing, uh, how many of you are um, come out of a Presbyterian church background or a Reformed church background, if you put your hands up? Okay. Not quite, not quite half of the class. Okay, all right, that's, that's really good. How, how many of you come out of a, just a real church background? You, you kind of spent a lot of time in church, and so you, okay, all right. Okay, all right, great. Um, so good to have you, and that, that'll help me to kind of think through how I communicate some things to you. Um, remember, again, uh, this, this is the Pastors and Choirs class, and so uh, we, we would want, if you feel... Um, if you feel called to the Lord to be a member here at Redeemer Church and you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, we want you to be here. And what that means is that, you know, like some of the things that I worked through in this class may be things that, that you, you believe and you go, this is what, this is what the Bible teaches and I'm, I'm all in on it. Uh, some of it may be new to some of you, especially those who don't come out of a Presbyterian background and maybe the first time you've heard it. Um, there, there are some things that are critically important for being a member of this church, like you know Jesus as your Savior. All the rest of these things are important. I mean, they, they shape what we believe, what our theology is, and so forth. But that doesn't mean you can't be a member here if you have some issues with some of the things that I'll be teaching. Uh, you, know, if you, you know, if you feel called to be here and come, and, and come into the church like Redeemer with your eyes open to what we believe, so I'm not going to be hiding anything from you. I'm not going to do this kind of, you know, kind of give you the, the front of it and then pull back the curtain when you're a member or anything like that. You'll get it all. You'll get it all here in this class so you'll know what we believe. And if, if you feel led to this, and even if you don't agree with it, but you can be humble in the mix of a church that has particular beliefs, we, we want you here, and, and we'll be glad to have you. Um, 
I'm going to be giving you a lot of information in this class. It's kind of like a fire hydrant. And, and so I, I do want you to, to make sure you do this. As we move through the material, if you have any questions about anything in particular, please jot those questions down. Okay? At the end of the class, we have, uh, and I'll go over the schedule with you in this in a moment, but at the end of the class, we have just a question and answer class, which basically means I will just come in here and open it up to you to ask any question that you may have. And that'll give you the opportunity to kind of get some of those things uh, uh, answered that you may have questions about. In addition to that, uh, I want you to know that, that you, can, um, you can set up a meeting with me if you need to meet with me for clarity on something. And as you go along, you may find yourself there. And, and then also, please know, because it's the Pastors Inquirers class, it is our new member class for those who want to join. But for those who are just trying to find out things and you're not ready to join when this is over, that's okay too. And you know, the last thing we want to do is just force people into membership if you're not ready. It may be something that happens in this class and you go, maybe I, maybe I need a little more time to think through these things. Or in addition to that, it may be that your life, where you are right now in your life, may cause you to go, I, I, I probably need to wait for a little while. We've had a lot of people do that. But we do want you to join if you're interested. We'd love to have you as a part of the Redeemer family, and I hope you feel that kind of welcome being genuine to you as you make your way through this class. Uh, and even as you're thinking through things that, like, I, I don't know, that's different than what I have thought about. And that that's, that's really is okay um, because, you know, we all are kind of wrestling through these things to, to see what the Bible does teach us about them. So, so with that, let me kind of take you through a little bit of what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks. If you look at the introduction in your notebook, this notebook, by the way, please bring it every time. Uh, I think we're going to be preparing name tags for them. So next week they'll come. With, you'll have prepared name tags uh, next week, and then they encourage you to just bring, you know, wear your name tag uh, when you come to class. Uh, inside the notebook, there's a lot of information that's tucked in the little pockets, and and that information, as we go through the class, we'll we'll talk about it and so forth. So just make sure you don't drop that out on the floor. You keep that there and 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 handy for the times that we want to talk about it. But in the introduction, you'll you'll see the schedule, and I just real quickly to kind of take you through uh, some of the things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to, you know, today we're basically going to talk about what does it mean to be a, uh, how to become a member of Redeemer Church. So we're going to do a little quick overview of the gospel. We're going to talk about membership vows uh, and those kind of things because, you know, that I, I, I think the vast majority of you who are here today probably have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. You, you know him as your personal savior. However, it, it would be a miss on my part if inserted a new member class that leads to membership in the church that I don't talk to you about what the gospel actually is. And so this will probably be in some ways redundant to most of you, but it needs to be done just in, in case. Uh, some of you may not understand what the gospel is. And maybe the way I'll put this may be slightly different than the way you've kind of thought about it in the past. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, th then we're going to spend a couple of weeks talking about, you know, Presbyterian beliefs because we want you to understand what those are. So we'll talk about our theology, which is distinct from other Protestant denominations. And we'll get into that. What does it mean to be reformed? I'll talk to you about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the sacraments, which if you've been here for any time, uh, you have probably seen us. One thing that probably has stood out to you, unless you come out of a Presbyterian background, is we put water on babies. So we baptize babies. And so I'm going to, I'm going to talk you through that. And that's, you know, that's, it's, it's, Maybe different from some of you who are coming out of backgrounds where you have held to only professors' baptism or believers' baptism. Uh, it also is different for those of you who maybe come out of a Catholic church. It's not the same as that, or even a Methodist church that puts water on babies, but it's different than that. So I'll kind of go over and help you kind of think through that a little bit, so at least you, you understand where we're coming from when we're doing that. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Presbyterian history and practices, so you can kind of have a, a, a bit of a, an understanding of, of our where we, where we come from in the trajectory of Protestant churches. And so I'll talk you through that a little bit. We'll talk about our government, church government, uh, and what we're, you know, how, how this church is, is ruled, the authority in this church, and how it works, which is also different. You know, depending on your background, Presbyterianism is, you know, there's some foundational things, some core things that we would believe with, you know, with every other Bible-believing Christian. You know, so I'm, I'm assuming, even if you're not Presbyterian, the reason you're here is because you recognize that from my preaching and the times you've been, you know, I'm not, I'm not, teaching you heresy, right? I mean, it's like, regardless of whether you're Presbyterian or not, you know, this dude is preaching the Bible. So, got that. Okay. However, there are some things that you're going to realize, you know, that, you know, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, Pentecostals, and so forth, we, we have a lot of things that 
we differ on. And, and Presbyterianism has some very distinct beliefs. And so we want to talk about that. And government is one of them. Um, and we are ruled by elders. And I'll explain to you a little bit about what that is and talk to you about the role of women and, and specifically the role of women in ordained leadership because we have a, a, a particular position on that as well, which you've probably already noticed if you haven't heard anybody say we believe in, in male ordained leadership in the church. And so if you're opposed to that, don't leave the church just based on me saying that. Let me talk you through it. So stick it out until I get to that lesson, okay? Um, then we're going to talk about vision. And, and for, for a lot of people, and I heard it even in this class, um, one of the things that has resonated with you about this church and attracted you to it is, is the vision of Redeemer. And so we're going to spend two sessions kind of talking through what does it mean to be a multi-ethnic church? What does it mean to be a church for a community, a church in the city? And so I'm going to take you through those things. And, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's important. And I'll, I'll tell you, you know, remember when I said at the, at the beginning of this, I said that, you know, you can... You can vary somewhat in terms of your theological positions, as long as you understand and come in humility, recognizing that you're going to see these things happen, you're going to hear me preach on the, in these ways, and so forth. If you're comfortable in that, you, will, you, you can have a home here. You really can. Okay? Um, in, in terms of vision stuff, let me, let me say this, and I don't want in any way to communicate to you, so let me, let me preface this. I'm not communicating that vision is more important than theology. However, one of the things I have seen in the life of this church is if you come into Redeemer and become a member of Redeemer and you are like adamantly opposed to the vision, meaning you, you really don't like, like being in diversity or you really don't like being in a multi-ethnic setting, or you really, I'll be, you really don't like having a black preacher. Well, I can't change that, right? So this may not be the best place for you. I just kind of say that up front. And, and a lot of times our, our vision, it, it, you know, it, that's what ends up kind of rubbing against people is that's fleshed out. And so I want to talk you through some of that so you, you know kind of where we are and what we believe and what does that look like in the life of our church. Uh, and, and also that you want that. And, and I would assume, I'm hearing it from a lot of you already, that that's something that's attractive to you about this church. And specifically in the context of being in Jackson and in Mississippi, you just don't see a lot of churches like Redeemer Church. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's something that's appealing to you. I'll take you through that, though. Then we're going to talk to you about, uh, notice on uh, October 19th, by the way, I'll be preaching a mission conference out of town. So we won't have class that day. But then you notice after that, we're going to talk to you some about how to get plugged in. Really, really important. We're going to tell you about help you to understand kind of yourself a little bit better, your gifts, uh, the things that are important for you to consider as you think about joining the church, that you're not just joining the church to be a spectator, you're not just joining the church to come on Sunday mornings, you're joining the church because you, you want to be involved in the life of the church. Now that doesn't mean, by the way, that everybody in here will be involved in things to the extent of everybody else. We are all at different places in life, and I know a, a number of you are students, and, and some of you are grad students, some of you are medical students, and I can imagine that's a lot of stuff on you. Um, some are young families, maybe with children and so forth, so we're not asking you to be here every time the door opens up. But if you do become a member of the church, we are asking you to be a part of the life, the body life of the church. So it's not just coming on a Sunday morning, it's finding some way in which you're getting involved. So we're going to talk to you about that, and then we're going to bring in a bunch of people who are going to present ministries to you, and we're going to actually have a ministry uh, fair, and I'll mention that more in a moment, but we'll bring people in here, and they'll tell you about different ministries and ways you can get involved in the life of the church. Then after that, on November 9th, we have our question and answer session, which I'll just come in and answer whatever questions you may have. Then, now let me, let me show you how you become a member here. Um, as I already said, you have to be a believer in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay. To become a member here, what you have to do is basically share that testimony of faith with one of our elders. So on, if you notice these, these dates, November 16th and November 23rd, you'll come to this class and all of our elders in our church, they will be in here. And they will basically take you, one, you know, as a couple or individually, and they'll hear your testimony, ask you, you know, to share your testimony. And testimony, in case you've never shared one of these, and, and I know a lot of church backgrounds don't require this, but the testimony is basically your understanding of your relationship with Jesus. And, and all genuine testimonies will have a couple of things in them. One, that you've come to understand that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. 
and you've looked to Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, what he's done for you on Calvary's cross. And he, that you've, you've looked to him and been forgiven of your sins and trusted in him as Savior. And then, you know, just kind of a little bit of what your life looks like in Christ. That's a testimony. And so in, in one regard, as you give your testimony, uh, all the testimonies will be the same because it's, it's a sinner turning to God in, gra- by, in God's grace. Okay, that would be true for all of us who are Christians. Right? We're saved by grace, not by our works or anything like that. But everybody's testimony will be different because of how God saves you, the uniqueness of that experience, what happened. Some of you maybe were raised up in a church, and, and some of your testimonies will be, and this is fine. I love these testimonies, that you never knew a time when you didn't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You just understand that he has, he's your Lord and Savior, that he's died on a cross for you, and he's forgiven you of your sins, and you trusted him as Savior. For some, you're going to have these pretty you know, kind of amazing kind of explosive radical conversion experiences that's cool too so you just share that with an elder just so you know and so you're not you know dealing with any fear in this the elders are not here to quiz you on this our, our, our goal is basically to kind of get a sense of your heart to the extent that we can we can't see your heart I mean, and you know this in churches all the time. People will give, you know, really credible, seem like credible testimonies and walk away from the Lord later on. That happens in churches. So we can't see your heart. We can't. But we can kind of hear a little bit of your walk with the Lord. And, and if you aren't, used, you know, aren't used to doing this and you kind of stumble over it, the elders will just ask you some questions and kind of get you through it. It will, I promise you, it will be a very easy and simple thing for you to work through. But they hear your testimony that you know Jesus, and then they admit you into the membership. Okay. Then you're presented. So the presentation, I don't know, some of you have been here for a while, you may have seen this already. You're admitted in the membership by the elders of our church. And then you are presented to the congregation because we want our people to, to see who you are. And then you take your vows of membership at that particular time. And so, so on November the 30th is the presentation to the congregation and the membership vows. And I'll go over the vows with you in just, a, in just a moment so you know what those are. So you'll be up front, basically say your name, and then I'll take you through the vows and then pray for you. And, and we'll all welcome you into the, into the life of Redeemer Church. So that's a little bit of the, of the process. Any, any questions with that? About that? Okay. All right. All right. Um, let me just put a couple of websites up there, and just so you have these, and, and, and they're in your notebooks as well. Um, one is a Redeemer website. Um, make sure you go on that. It has a ton of information. Scheduling, all kind of sermons are on there. Um, uh, and also, if you happen to miss one of these classes, then you go on the website to be able to pull up the class and, and so forth. But it tells you, that's a way for you to keep informed of, of what's going on in the life of the church. Uh, Dina also is excellent in sending out these weekly reminders and prayer requests. I mean, one of the things that you will find if you're just willing to read these things, that we get a lot of information out to folks. And typically when folks say about Redeemer, we're not communicating enough, it probably is you're not reading enough. And because it's right there, Dina has sent it out over and over and over again, so you'll get these things. So I encourage you to stay, it's a way of staying informed about our church. The Presbyterian Church in America website, that's our denomination. We are the Presbyterian Church in America, or the PCA, uh, distinguished from other Presbyterian churches, and make sure you know that. Not all Presbyterians are the same, and just like not all Baptists are the same, and you know, right. We are a distinct denomination with very particular beliefs, and I'll take you through what we believe as we move through the course, but here's a good website for you to go to and just to find out more about our denomination if you happen to be interested in that. Dina. That's actually, it should be pcanet.org, not that. Okay, pcanet.org. Now take that, that dot out of the middle. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, and then we've already gone over the schedule and court. Now, how do you become a member of the church? Now, one of the things I've mentioned to you is, is that you have to have a credible profession of faith. You have to believe in Jesus. You have to understand and have embraced the gospel. And so let me take you through some of the things, ways of thinking about the gospel. First thing is this idea that the gospel is just, it's, it's a life, a whole new life. And, and, and understanding it from the perspective of what God has given us through Christ that he's given us life, and he's given us life eternal, and he's given us life abundantly. He's, he's t- taken people who are dead and their sins, and he's made us alive again. And so the gospel offers us life. Now, there's some important things to consider about this. And, and so I want to take you through these kind of real quickly, these five important facts about, about the gospel. One of them is this, that a loving God 
sent his son into, into the world to, to bring you a new and abundant life. That God sent Jesus into this world to bring us life. But the question then becomes, well, why is it that we, we need life? What have we lost? Um, John 10.10 10 says, A thief comes in only to steal and kill and destroy. Uh, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is how Jesus came. Now, the, our problem, though, is this. We are self-centered and not God-centered. You know, we're working through, I don't know if, how many of you were in the sermon this morning, but if you were, you'll know that we're working through Genesis 1 through 11 here at Redeemer. And, and one of the things that you'll see in, in the, the creation fall account is that when it comes to, to what's happened to us, it's not simply a matter that we have broken or are breaking rules, that we're just rule breakers. That, that's true. We are rule breakers. But it's more than that. We are rebels. We are in rebellion to God. We have turned away from God. And that's what sin ultimately is. When you think about the core of what sin is, it's turning away from God who is our creator, who's made us, who claims us, which is some of the things I say in the sermon today, and we've turned to ourselves. We've become, in a sense, the, the one who defines reality, our own gods. And so that's our problem. That's why we don't have life, because we're self-centered and self-focused as opposed to being God-focused. So Ephesians 2, 1 says, you were dead through your trespasses and sins. That's what happened. Because we've turned away from him, we, we killed ourselves. I mean, we've committed spiritual suicide, if you will, in turning towards ourselves, buying into the lie of the evil one, turning towards ourselves, thinking we would have this, all this. Instead, we ended up with exactly what God said, and that's death. Self-centered man is separated from a holy God by three, three big barriers. And here's, here's some things that have happened to us as a result of, of, of falling into, our, into sin. Uh, that we have now, because of self uh, turning and rebellion, we have a bad record. Uh, Romans 3.3 3 says all have sinned. So we just do. We're corrupt. And you talk about you know, rule breakers and rebellion and all that. Well, that's what we have. This keeps us from God. We have a bad record. We have a bad heart. Mark 7, 21, from the heart of man comes evil thoughts. And so, so there's, some, there's a corruption that's deeper than just our behavior. The, the behavioral corruption comes from the heart corruption, that we have a, a bad heart uh, in ourselves. And that's what leads us astray and, and to all kind of things that are harmful to ourselves and others and just destructive. And we have a bad master. John 8, 34 says, whoever commits sin is a is a slave, and a slave to sin. So, so you think about that, the heart becomes corrupt, then our lives become corrupt, what we live like, then we are, our, the master becomes sin and Satan. That's, that's the human condition. That's what's happened as a result of us turning away from God. Um, and the consequence of sin is separation from God. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. Now, God's solution to that. So this is our problem. This is, you know, we're, we're, we're standing in rebellion before God, and so God comes to us, and this is what's so glorious about his grace. He comes to us to, to, to redeem us, to, to, to save us, to bring us, to make us right with, with him, which is an amazing thing. I know we, we, if you've been in church for any time, you get so used to hearing that, that the, the wonder of it sometimes doesn't strike our hearts like it, it should, that we, we walk away from him the way we did, and that he comes after us the way he does. And he comes after us, and, and what he does is he, he, he deals with those things that become the barriers between us and him. And so he, instead of the bad record of sin, he gives us a perfect record in Christ. You know, 1 Corinthians 1.30, Christ is made our righteousness. Now this gets into something that's really important about Christianity, that when we think about what does it mean to know the Lord, what does it mean to be a Christian, it's not just simply the fact that Jesus died on a cross to save us from our sins, as critically important as that is, and it is, right? A lot of times, though, I remember I grew up with this thinking. I grew up thinking that, that all it meant to be a believer is to recognize that Jesus died on a cross, he took my sin upon himself, and he paid the penalty for my sin. That's true, and I, you have to have that, right? But what I didn't understand, which is, which is sometimes described as Jesus' active obedience, his passive obedience is what he did on the cross, his active obedience, meaning, passive meaning he suffered and died. He allowed that to happen to him, right? His act of obedience is talking about what he did in his life. That, so when you, when you read the Bible, you see when it talks about things like Jesus never sinned. He never broke the law of God. He's the only man to ever live to have a perfect record, right? 
He totally lived to his Father. And so when he, when, you know, when he summarizes the, the law of God by saying, it's love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus did those things perfectly. Now, the, the, the word, this is a big theological word. I'm going to tell you what it means. It's called imputation. And that big theological word means to account to. It's an accounting word, a credit to another, right? And so when you, when you input to someone else, you, you're crediting to their account, if you will, okay? So when we talk about Jesus' death and Jesus' life, then what we're saying is this, that all of our sin, all our bad lives and records and rebellion was accounted to Jesus, and Jesus paid the penalty for that on the cross. All of Jesus' perfect life, his record of righteousness, is accounted to us. So that by faith in Christ, we are not only seen by God and viewed by God and are by God forgiven, we are also righteous. And that's soon as you come in faith. Now, what that does when you believe that is it gets you off the kind of treadmill Christianity. Or this, this notion that somehow you're having to establish your rightness before God, that you already have it because of Jesus. And so our desire to live for God, it, it flows out of something different than, oh, if, I, if I do this, God's going to love me. No, he can't love you anymore. That you're, you're basically in faith responding to what God has done for you and living for him. So he gives us a new record. He gives us a new heart. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 26, a new heart I will give you. So remember, this is speaking to the barriers. He gives us a good master. My yoke is easy, and he is a good master. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. The blood of, Jesus, the blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. The free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so it's trusting in him and what he's done for us. So how do you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life? And, and I, I can imagine this is true for most of you. Have a living faith with him. But if not, here's how. You turn in sorrow from your sins. So you turn away from self and sin and you turn to Jesus. That's what the gospel declares. And you trust in Christ Jesus alone. That's what conversion is. In fact, some people describe conversion as the two sides of one coin. And so on the one coin, one side of the coin... It's turning in repentance from sin. On the other side of the coin is turning to Jesus in faith. So really, what is, what is rebellion and sin? Rebellion and sin is like, say this is God. So we were created to be for him. So here's sin. Here's the fall. Here's corruption. This is God. Here's us. We turn away to ourselves. And that's death. So what is life, new life again, that Jesus now has given to us and established that we can have is turning away from self and turning back around in faith to Jesus, okay? That's the gospel message. It's as simple as that, okay? Again, a new life. Uh, will you now surrender your life to Christ by turning from your self-centered way and trusting in him alone? Now, how does, how does this continue? It's, it's about, and the reason I put prayer constantly, so scripture, it's a life and attitude of relationship with God. And that's what prayer, I mean, when you talk about it, that you're, you're communicating him, you're in relationship with him. You're reading your Bible, he's in relationship with you. Relationship requires communication both ways, and that's what prayer and Bible reading is all about. You join, serve, and worship with others, and that's what you're here for. Because, and, and, you know, I said this in a, a, a setting the other day called Pipeline. It's a ministry of our church that's helping to get people plugged in. And one of the things I was talking about is membership. You do not see in the Bible, now membership does not have to look like what we are doing here at Redeemer necessarily, but you do not see in the Bible God's people just out there on their own. Like I can be this individualistic kind of Christian. You're always enfolded. You're always added to. You're always a part of the body life of the church. And so what you're doing here as a Christian, I think, is very important. Now, what more does the gospel produce? Well, here's some things, some other things. It produces community. And here, and you can fill this in if you have a pen. Um, it produces, first of all, an embracing community. This, the gospel brings us together in community. It produces an embracing community. It reflects the grace of God in Christ. The gospel also produces a godly community that's lovingly encouraging one another to live lives pleasing to God. That's one of the things we, we, we spur one another on towards good deeds, that we would be godly. That's what we're here together for, to embrace and to promote godliness. 
produces an honest community, uh, free to repent and free to allow others to repent because of Christ. I'm telling you, of all of these five things, this is the one that's, I think, most difficult for the church, and that's because of how easily churches become judgmental. And I, I want to, I'm saying this to you because I want Redeemer to be something different than that. I, I want Redeemer to be a place where you can be honest with your struggles because if you're, not, if you're not able to be honest with your struggles in the context of the church, how can you find the resources, meaning relationship resources, prayer resources, for people to help you to overcome the things you're struggling with? And so there's some things in the Bible that, that are just so obviously clear, like in James chapter 5 where it talks about with, you know, those who are sick and come to the elders and pray. And then it says we are to confess our, our, our sins to one another and then be healed. I mean, think about that. I mean, we've gotten so bent out of shape over, you know, Catholics, you know, you know, confessing to priests that we like act like that's not something that's absolutely essential to the healing of the body of Christ. That we're able to open up and share with each other the things we're struggling with in an honest, loving setting so that we can find the power for healing in our lives. I want that here at Redeemer. In Galatians 6, it talks about how we're to carry one another's burdens. Well, how are we to carry one another's burdens if we don't know how other people are burdened? And the only way you're going to know how other people are burdened is if you create an atmosphere where people can be honest with one another. And so we want that. Uh, an edifying community that builds one another up. And then a serving community that engages in the lives of others. These are all things. Embracing, um, let me back up for it. Embracing, godly, honest, edifying, serving. The gospel brings all that about in the life of the church. Now, let me take you quickly through the membership vows here. And these are things, like if you come into the membership of the church, you share your testimony of faith with an elder, you're brought into a membership, then when you're presented on that Sunday morning before the congregation, these are the vows that you'll have to take. And let me just take you through them. The elders will go over these again with you when you're coming into membership to make sure you understand them. Um, actually, I'm jumping ahead. Let me, that's going to come in just a second. Um, you have to give a credible profession of faith. Um, the profession, let me tell you ways that you can come into membership. Profession of faith, which is the first time public profession of faith, which means, say for instance, you've never been a member of a church. And you're professing your faith and coming into a membership of Redeemer for the first time in the church. You'll come in by profession of faith. Reaffirmation of faith is you are a member of another church and you are just reaffirming your faith in Christ as you come into the membership of this church. That may be many of you. Letter of transfer is that you are coming out of another PCA church. And so you come out of another church in our denomination, and you're transferring your letter of membership to us. Those are ways that you'll come into And you'll be asked that as you're coming in. Are you a member of a church? What church? And so forth. So we can, and the reason for the letter of transfer is so that, that we can make sure people in other Presbyterian churches know that you are not on their roles anymore, but that you're under, under our leadership here at Redeemer Church. Associate membership, and by the way, if you're here for two or three years as a student, we'd love to have, have you be a full member of our church. However, there are some people who come who don't live here in Jackson, who come to, to, to Jackson as a student, and they're planning on going back to their home church, and it's, another, it's a PCA church, church in our denomination. Associate membership may be something for you because you don't want to leave that other membership. And this is believers who are temporarily residing in a location other than their permanent homes may choose to come into membership in that way. So these are the ways that you will join the church. And so if you're sitting here and you, you were going, I don't know if I wanted to leave my church because I'm only going to be here for a couple of years, then that may be for you. But you can join regardless, even if you're going to be here for a short time. All right, here's the vows. These you have to be able to say yes to. So think about these. Do you acknowledge yourself to be sinners in the sight of God, justly deserving his displeasure, and without hope, saving his sovereign mercy? You have to be able to say yes. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and the Son of God as, as the Son of God and the Savior of sinners? And do you receive and rest upon him alone for salvation as he's offered in the gospel? Do you now resolve and promise in humble reliance upon the grace of the Holy Spirit that you will endeavor to live as, live as becomes the followers of Christ? So you're, you're basically committing to the first two, the gospel. Third one is a life of spirit-empowered obedience. Four, do you promise to support the church in its worship and work to the best of your ability? So you, you actually are committing to be a part of a church, a local church, right? Um, you know, one of the this has happened at Redeemer. This is a terrible story. Don't, please don't do this. Um, which is, you join a church and you're here two weeks and then you're they gone. We don't see you anymore. I'm telling you. There's this thing that kind of gets in people's heads here. As long as I get my name on the roll, it's all okay. Don't do that. So you, when you're vowing something, you're, 
Yeah, like, I, I want to be a part of this church because I'm actually going to be here at this church, right? So, but we've had enough of those examples that people have done that and then disappear. I, th- that does not serve you any good. I just want you to know, okay? God isn't just waiting for you to sign the dotted line of a church and then everything's good with you. Um, and five, do you submit yourselves to the government and discipline of the church and promise to study its purity and peace? Studying its purity and peace means you, you, as you're in relationships here, you're going to work through those relationships with people here. You want peace in the body. The first part of this, though, I just real quickly want to mention this idea of you're, you're under the leadership, pastoral oversight of me and elders. And the discipline of the church basically means that we, at Redeemer Church, I mean, the first form of discipline, we believe, is the right preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Okay. What I'm doing is, the reason that's discipline is it's like if you're thinking it's off, it's kind of bringing it back into, into alignment. That's what discipline is. It's correcting. Our, our session here at Redeemer also is involved in your lives, and we want to be involved in your lives. So, and our goal in all of this is by grace and love to help to encourage and stir you on towards a life of holiness. Now, what that means, though, and please note this, all right, this is really important, that if you become a member of our, this church, we're going to be concerned about the things that are going on in your life, okay? That means, I'm going to be specific, it means this, if you are married and you decide to get a divorce, that's going to concern us. And so are other things as well. Now, I say that to you and that specific example to you because we've had another, enough people come into the membership of this church along the way who they have come into the church members and decided to get divorced and then said, what in the world does the church have to do with me getting a divorce from my husband? Well, I'm telling you right now, that's a spiritual thing. And what we're going to be concerned about as leaders in this church is your spiritual lives. And your marriage is a spiritual issue. And so we are going to want to help to nurture you towards healing in your marriage and provide all kind of resources for you and all that. So please keep that in mind, that we are concerned about your spiritual life. And that's what discipline will, will mean in that regard. Um, just a couple of things. Community members, just so you know this, the difference between non-community and community members, you'll hear this language some. Community members are those who have made a profession of faith and been admitted to full community membership by the session. So if you join, you will become a community member of this church. However, there's also something called non-communing members. And this is, your, those of you who have, have children, little children, children of communing members who have not made a public profession of faith and thus have not been brought to the full membership of the church, they are, they, they are non-communing members and are not admitted to the Lord's table and cannot vote. So those of you who have, how many of you have some kids, have little kids? Okay. Those of you who have little kids, um, your, your children, you, are, you will become a member your children will become non-communing members, which means that they are part of this covenant family. And in one regard, we consider them to be members of the church. But they're non-communing. They haven't made a public profession of faith. They've not, they're not admitted to the Lord's table. But they, they are considered members. They can't vote, but they're considered under the care of our church, even though they're not full members. When they get of age where they make a profession of faith, then they, are, they can come into a new member classes for their age and be brought into membership. And that's what our communicants class is, is for them. Now, we are starting, for those of you who have children either, thir- either 9 to 13 years old or even older than that, who are looking to come into the membership of the church, and that may not be anybody here, but if, there is, if any of you are in that category, we are going to start a communicants class on the 28th of September. So you can talk to me about that, and I'll let you know a little bit more. And that's it. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you.